other mantras that I've discovered have to be played continuously. One of the first times that I was working with this, I had recorded it and I sat it in my um, office. And in my office, I have a very large window that's about eight, nine feet tall and about eight, nine feet across. And I have a number of plants there. And there's some speakers just off to the left of the plants. And the sun comes in one way and the speakers are in another direction. The plants would turn away from the sun toward the sound. And when I first saw this, I thought, that's really interesting. Sunlight versus this sound. So what's different about this sound? So I gave the prayer, the recording, to a number of my students and asked them to experiment with it. And I reported to them what I had found. And even sometimes they put the prayer in a dark room with plants. And the plants would still grow toward the sound. A number of times we work with animals who are very sick. And animals, when they're sick, they will sit with the prayer and not move as though they're sitting in attention, waiting for something. And then something clicks inside the animal, and then the animal's better. It's like they have to listen long enough for the body to get the instructions it needs to turn the energy on or whatever it, the energy does to help the animal heal. So thus far from my working with this prayer, I found that it offers some spiritual protection. I've had a number of people that I'm working with that had spiritual disturbances in their homes, poltergeist phenomena. One lady that I was working with had a, a room in her house, it was one of her guest bedrooms, that had a, a god-awful smell. She could just never get rid of the smell. She changed the carpet, uh, she just cleaned the room as best she could, but there were also, when people would sleep in there, they would hear noises. And so she had had uh, shamans, she had healers come in and try to work with the room, and I asked her to play the prayer in there for a week. Well, the first three times she tried to play the prayer, the CD players broke. And the CDs cracked. And so I said, what I want you to do is to place the, print out this 42 letter name of God and place the CD player on top of the 42 letter name of God. And then the CD played fine. And over about a week, the smell gradually dissipated and the phenomena stopped. And she repeats this about once every three or four months and the room has remained clear. There was another case of a little boy that I was working with who um, his mother had brought him in because he was having difficulty sleeping. And the little boy would say that at night when he tried to go to sleep, he would see some bad, funny looking men come out of the wall and try to tickle him. And he wouldn't go to sleep because he didn't like the long claws that they had to try to tickle him. So long claws trying to tickle you, okay? So we gave him the prayer, and I asked him to play the prayer at night when he was trying to go to sleep. Mother brought him back into me two weeks later, and the child was sleeping fine. So I asked, well, what changed? What was different? And the child said that when he puts the prayer on, a ball of light appeared in the upper right-hand corner of the room, and two angels came out, and they took the bad men away. And that way he could sleep. So it was, it was stories like that that really began to make me look at what we were dealing with with this. Also, I've noticed that when people play the prayer, if they have a junky room that they play it in, they feel compelled to clean it up. If you listen to this, I defy you to have a junkie desk when you have this on. Also, if you play this at night when you go to sleep, your dreams will become extraordinarily vivid. I don't really understand why that is so far, but if you let it play just at a subliminal level in the background, your dreams will become extraordinarily vivid. So that's one of the tools we use for spontaneous healing called the, the miracle prayer. Another tool that we use for healing is called the words of power for healing. These are also Kabbalistic words that are the names of God associated with the power of healing itself. We also have uh, recorded these uh, in a chant that I was shown by um, a rabbi, and it's a certain cadence. In order for most words of power to work, you have to sing them. They're not just spoken as traditional words. They have to be sung or chanted. 
So if you just speak them in normal language and normal cadence, they don't work the same. I didn't know that. So in this particular recording, we recorded um, these words of power in the cadence that is necessary for them to be used. I also learned that most words of power are given to us in a locked formation, which means that in the physical world, words of power are locked down so that we can't use them. So there have to be mantras or phrases that are spoken before you speak the words of power that unlock them. And in particular, this, uh, the words of power for healing are unlocked by saying arom norea before you speak the words and then after you speak the words. The first speaking of arom norea unlocks the power. The second speaking of arom norea releases the power to do the work that you wanted to do for the focus. Again, we have this recorded, and if we don't have any more copies upstairs, we have it on our website for download and also uh, in a pretty good recording. There's also a prayer we have called releasement, or I guess you could call it a prayer. And we use something called a divine world prayer, or the Amatsu Norigoto. This prayer is a restructuring of an ancient Shinto prayer. And it's designed to get rid of demonic and negative energies from the body. When you memorize and speak this prayer, it allows negative energy to leave the body simply because of the force of the energy of the prayer. The prayer gathers the molecules that are stored inside the body that strike us from the primordial world and calls the molecules to act on our behalf to clear the body itself of this negative energy. The, the prayer also uses some tones that are related to EMDR that allow the energy to work faster and more efficiently. It allows the prayer to work with the energy in the CD to extract negative entities automatically as you listen to it. It's called releasement. It's one of the recordings that I'm really happiest with. Probably the most powerful of all the prayers that we have is called the Usnisa Vijaya Dharani. This is easily the most powerful of all the prayers that I've ever come across. Again, we have this prayer listed on our website at tybro, tybro.com. And we also have a recording of it. <clears throat> There's a great deal of information on the web written about this Dharani, but I'll give you a quick synopsis of it. This Dharani was given to a man who was destined to be reborn in some hell-like dimensions. He had done a number of crimes when he was alive and he petitioned the Medicine Buddha to have mercy on him. And the Medicine Buddha, along with a number of other Buddhas, uh, about 10,000 of them according to the legend, got together and they spoke this prayer to this man's soul on his behalf. Following that, this man was reborn into a royal family and didn't have to go into the negative spiritual world. We also call it the prayer of greater miracles. Now, there's a reason that I call this the most powerful of all the prayers that we have. Let me just show you what it looks like. Yeah. <clears throat> this prayer is in ancient Sanskrit. When you memorize and work, even if you just say this prayer, I've seen some really remarkable things happen. Let me give you just a couple of examples. About three weeks ago, I was working with a lady who had been unemployed for over about a year. She'd had difficulty finding work. She was at the last end of her unemployment, and she was having difficulty thinking about paying rent for the next month. She was also having trouble. Her husband was kind of seeing another woman, kind of had a child from another person, kind of was an alcoholic. You get the, you get the picture. <clears throat> kind of, yeah. So she, had, she called me and she was very upset about her life and she was thinking of ending her life. But she had heard that I had prescribed this Dharani for other people and what I asked her to do was to say this, to memorize this Dharani first and then to repeat it 21 times a day for 40 days. Also during the repetition she was to fast from sunrise to sunset. At the end of the day, of each day, she was 